Hi everyone, I'm Richard and joining me today is John Linneman. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Well, yesterday I posted a video about Doom running using the new Vulkan API and there were some pretty, well, I'd say fantastic results there, I think especially if you're an AMD owner. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think what we're seeing here is two things. One, the Vulkan API is proving itself with the results we see in Doom, but it also kind of demonstrates how poor AMD's OpenGL drivers have been. Yeah, there was a huge uptick there, which was quite remarkable, but what was frustrating from my perspective was that we couldn't really benchmark it in the way that we usually benchmark uh, GPUs and uh, basically, you know, just sort of hanging about looking at different places in a level wasn't really fully indicative benchmark for me. So what I wanted to do was to go back to Doom, running Vulkan, running OpenGL, and to use our console algorithms to ascertain the frame rate. Now, the issue here is that console games run at 60 FPS or under, and that's how our algorithms work. So the big challenge I actually had with Doom running on the R9 Fury X was to actually make it run slower <laughs> than 60 FPS. And the way I did it was to use 4K resolution, 60 hertz, absolute max settings, uh, aside from the nightmare textures, which uh, Doom won't let me use on a 4 gig card and well as you can see from the settings here well that's pretty much what we've got there uh, yeah so we're going to be uh, dipping in there you can see we've got 3840 by 2160 4k full screen mode and yep vsync off now I did want to actually have borderless full screen with a vsync off to show you the performance improvement while at the same time not showing the tearing but we've got a bit of an issue here because vsync is off all the time regardless Regardless, whatever mode you're using so unfortunately we can't avoid the tearing here but what you are getting is a direct 4k capture from a secondary PC using a very expensive capture card and <laughs> here we are running the game and uh, yeah if you look in the top right there we've got all of the statistics that you need and well yeah we're sort of here about sort of 47 50 FPS but a lot of the time we're actually running well over 60 so when it actually came to doing the benchmark a bit later on. I actually had to be quite selective in where I actually did the captures. Yeah, that's actually kind of an interesting thing though because obviously it's showing how well optimized Doom actually is that we had to search out specific locations to do this. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, it looks quite good so far actually. Yeah, yeah. this is 53, 54 FPS. When we actually get into that external area uh, directly after this, you'll see that the performance actually goes sort of well above 60 in a lot of, lot of places which is quite remarkable now bearing in mind this is 4k resolution right, this right. is max settings and we're getting 50 to 53 fps it's quite remarkable now here we're actually showing you one of those areas where we're constantly under 60 and you can see here the comparison between OpenGL and Vulkan and it is absolutely massive there yeah it's, I think you said it's somewhere between the difference of a 980 and a 980T in well, terms of performance here. In terms of the relative performance, yeah, sure, because I'm seeing 36.6 average on OpenGL and 48.8 on Vulkan, and that is a straight 33.3% improvement there, which is absolutely remarkable, especially for 4K. Yeah, really, absolutely. Typically, you would see much lower increases at a higher resolution. That may well be the case here. So, you know, 1440p would be quite remarkable. But here now, we're moving on to 1070 OpenGL versus Vulkan, and you can see it's much of a muchness. And an issue we have here, if you look at the frame time, is that uh, OpenGL is running with VSync off, but uh, Vulkan seems to be running with VSync on, or borderless full screen, I think, actually, which is not good. No. And... No, and if we actually compare Vulkan on 1070 to Vulkan on R9 Fury X, then yeah, you know, basically the Fury is way ahead. Okay, so this is the one that everyone has been wanting to see, which would be Vulkan versus Vulkan 1070 versus Fury X. The results are 48.8 FPS versus 38.5. That's a 26% advantage, 27% if we round up for the Fury X there, which is, you know, heat of the gameplay stuff fairly similar footage that is a big AMD advantage.
Yeah, it really is. It's one of those few times, I guess, when we're really seeing the Fury Head really pull ahead of the 1070, in fact. Yeah, I mean, it is these new APIs that AMD really has invested heavily on. And obviously, uh, Vulkan, I guess they would have a big advantage there, owing to the fact that it's heavily derived from Mantle, which is a lot of their work there. Ah, yes. Yeah, so interesting stuff. But, you know, again, one thing I think we should be stressing here is that the vast majority of games out there are running on older APIs and the actual optimization effort from AMD there has been fairly minimal. And that's why we're seeing these big gains, because the older drivers aren't actually so hot. But at the same time, Vulcan performance on the 1070 really isn't that impressive. Yeah, but I mean, there's not uh, there's not too much to complain about on the NVIDIA side, I think. They're, it's pretty consistent with where you would expect the hardware to be. If anything, I think it's just what we're seeing is that AMD's hardware really is quite good. Yeah. But they've been limited by the weak APIs here. Yeah, I mean, we're running back now into full screen Fury X footage here, VSync off, and we're still in this outdoors area. But you can see that we're sort of high 50s, mid, uh, mid 60s here. And, you know, this is full settings lots of post-processing going on you know depth of field that cripples loss of games at 4k resolution <laughs> but here it barely breaks a sweat and i think you're right it's just a really well optimized game which has now been getting the most out of the hardware with this new api yeah i mean with the release of vulcan on doom it almost seems like this could be one of the most optimized pc games in existence at this point yeah i think one thing i would like to look at when i've got time when i've got time is <laughs> um is to see how the game stacks up with a dual core cpu because there's a lot of talk at the moment about the advantages of asynchronous compute. Oh, yes. Uh, which is a really, really big deal for AMD. And uh, But at the same time, we can't forget that uh, a big plus point of the Vulkan and DX12 APIs is that it spreads the load over more cores. And that's a particularly big deal for AMD, where their driver at the moment is mostly single-threaded. So if you've got a slow CPU uh, with only a couple of cores, then you're in trouble. Uh, with AMD in a lot of scenarios, but with Nvidia, their DX11 driver is actually quite well optimized. Uh, but here, it's kind of like an advantage which we should actually test out on something like a dual core i3 to see just what the improvement is there. Yeah, I'd also like to see it on some of AMD CPUs as well, just to see what we're getting here. Yeah, yeah, I actually saw a really interesting demo um, at an AMD event where they were comparing an i7 with a 970 with an FX8350 with an RX4. 80. Hmm. So similar GPUs in terms of power, but the CPU, obviously, the i7 is like light years beyond the <laughs> FX8350. But basically, the remarkable thing was that uh, AMD's system there was actually winning. Now, the, the sort of caveat there is that it was running Hitman under DX12, which is uh. so heavily in favor of AMD. It, it's, it's quite remarkable, and not just under DX12 uh, there, DX11 as well. Right. It's uh, one of the, the, the best AMD performers. But at the same time, yeah, it's really interesting to see how these new APIs are actually producing sort of game-changing performance here. Obviously, with the hardware having been there for a while and the experience uh, on consoles and whatnot, it's it seems like uh, the PC platform can finally take advantage of some of the things that have been available there all along on the AMD side. Yeah, I mean, we have seen a number of games uh, this year which are console ports where uh, AMD it seems to have like a, an inbuilt advantage and you know Hitman is a really interesting example because for sure it's not just you know everyone wheels out the DX12 benchmark but you know holy crap on DX11 it's doing pretty well as well <laughs> and um, yeah speaking to developers there's a lot of low level sort of optimization for GCN going on at the moment to get the most out of uh, out of the hardware and I think that is actually translating across to uh, PC yeah that was something we kind of talked about or theorized would happen back when these consoles first launched and it finally seems like it's starting to really make an actual difference here yeah definitely and it's interesting that it's taken so long because right. i think uh, a lot of the time you know games take two or three years to develop these days and sure i guess you know at that point early on it was kind of, you know, basically PC ports in, in many respects. Yeah, with Doom in particular, this async compute business is really sort of yielding big results for them. Now, on the DX11 code, there was no async compute. And if we look back to our PC analysis at the time, we actually needed some pretty meaty hardware to get 
console style experience. It was like a 380 or right, right. 9, 960, and typically that's like a class above the kind of hardware that you normally use to get console equivalent experiences. But yeah, with Doom, we actually saw that you needed quite a sort of meaty system to get that sort of similar level of uh, fidelity. So it'd be interesting again to see to go back and try the older hardware with Vulkan. But the difference there, of course, is the asynchronous compute. And um, id said at the time that they were gaining something like uh, three to five milliseconds from using async compute, which we couldn't see on PC until now. And you know, if you think about that, three to five milliseconds in terms of a 16.7 millisecond render budget, that's absolutely huge. It really is, yeah. Yeah, so I really would, again, if I can find the time, go back and with our budget uh, AMD rig and to see just how much of a gain those less sexy uh, GPUs are kind of gaining here. And on the flip side, I, I think I mentioned I'm also interested to see how NVIDIA's older hardware stack up. Uh, some of the results from the Kepler cards really uh, suggest that they are not performing very well with Doom and they did not gain anything or very little with Vulkan. I mean, obviously, they, these are not cards designed for async computers or anything like that, but uh, they, they fall well behind the GTX 970, for instance, like a 780 Ti does. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, um, one thing that we have to bear in mind is that we are at really early stages of driver development. And the, True. And the fact that I can't run V-Sync on the R9 Fury X, <laughs> and I can't run with V-Sync off on the GTX 1070, I mean, this is like really basic stuff. It's like, yeah. oh, hold, hold on a minute, nobody noticed this? <laughs> And um, so, you know, I think basically we've got really early driver issues at the moment. And, True. well, you know, hopefully things will improve later on. But, you know, the big issue at the moment is whether that async compute will translate effectively to NVIDIA. Because the big games at the moment that are really emphasizing async compute aren't really seeing that much of a boost on NVIDIA hardware. While at the same time, we are seeing big, big boosts on AMD. Yeah, it should be interesting to see what happens later on down the road. But yeah, I guess we're running out of footage here and running out of time. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed watching this full 4K presentation. Again, really wish I could have turned off. The <laughs> I could have turned on the VSync here, so it wasn't such a tear fest. But hopefully, you've been taking a look at those statistics in the corner. And yeah, you know, 50, 60 FPS for the most part, sometimes higher. 4K max settings, R9 Fury X. That's a pretty remarkable result. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So so, well, that's all we've got for now. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see more. But I guess for me, that's it. Take care.